I love 3D printing, maybe a little too much. 3D printers are incredibly versatile tools. They can make a wide variety of items in a wide variety of materials. They can do a lot, but they can't do everything. For one, they're limited to processing plastics, at least the consumer grade ones are. They're also limited in the minimum feature size they can resolve. Ultimately, there are some applications for which a 3D printer just isn't the right tool. If you fit the limits of what your printer can do, it may be time to branch out and expand your capabilities. This is where laser cutting comes in. In many ways, laser cutters are very similar to 3D printers. They're comprised of many of the same components. Motors, belts, rails, a tool head, and a control board. Some of them are even made by the same manufacturers. You know, like the ones that make the tried and true Ender 3, or the Fast and Furious K1. That's right, I'm talking about Creality. Their Falcon 2 laser cutter is an example of a diode laser. It's like a laser pointer, but instead of entertaining the cat, it cuts through solid wood or plastic. You may hear the terms laser cutter and laser engraver used interchangeably. That's because these machines can do both. By adjusting the speed of the motion and the intensity of the laser, we can alter the penetration depth. Lower power and faster speeds give an engraving effect. The laser marks the surface of the material without cutting it. Higher power and lower speeds give a cutting effect. The depth of the cut will depend on both of those parameters, as well as the composition of the material. Softwoods like pine cut relatively quickly and easily, compared to hardwoods or plastics. You can even cut metal given a high enough power laser. Power, measured in watts, is a measure of the laser's strength. The Falcon 2 40 watt, for example, is capable of cutting thin sheets of stainless steel. This wasn't always possible with this class of laser. Diode lasers, otherwise called desktop or hobby lasers, have traditionally been less capable than their more industrial counterparts, those being CO2 or fiber lasers. These use a different methodology to generate the laser, which results in a higher power beam, often in the 60 to 100 watt range. These higher powers allow for cutting thicker materials, but the machines have a much larger footprint. In recent years, the hobby class of diode lasers have become increasingly capable. Just a few years ago, a 5 watt laser was as good as it got. Then came 10 watt, then 22, and now we're starting to see 40 watt lasers on the market. With higher powers comes the ability to cut quicker and cut deeper. Compared to a 3D printer, a laser cutter is much simpler to operate. Rather than dozens of user controllable parameters like layer height, extrusion width, speed, and temperature, you only have three, power, speed, and airflow. In this case, power is measured as a percentage of the maximum the laser is rated for. The airflow is provided by an external compressor called the air assist. It helps prevent burning to yield cleaner edges when cutting. Not all hobby lasers include this as stock hardware, but the Creality Falcon does. Laser cutters and 3D printers both take G-code as the input to their operation. 3D printer G-code is generated by a slicer. Laser cutter G-code is generated by its own dedicated software. The process is simple. Import an image in SVG format, configure the settings, then export the G-code to an SD card, or connect directly to your computer. Before running the job, it's important to ensure your workpiece is positioned appropriately within the cutting area. You'll also need to adjust the height of the laser head to ensure the workpiece coincides with the focal point of the laser. A convenient feature called Frame allows you to perform a dry run, in which the laser will trace out the outline of your design without actually cutting. When you're ready to cut, hit run and the laser will turn on and start engraving or cutting. If the material is ever ignited by the laser, a fire detection system will kill the power. This works in a similar way as thermal runaway on your 3D printer. When working with new materials, it's advised to print a test pattern in order to determine which combination of settings will yield the desired darkness of engraving or depth of cut. This is akin to the temperature tower you may have printed while calibrating a new printer. If the desired darkness or depth can't be achieved in a single pass, we can increase the number of passes. Those are the basics of the operation. So what do you need to get started if this is a hobby you'd like to pursue? Well, besides the machine itself, You'll also need a backing plate to prevent cutting your table or work surface. You may also wish to pick up some optional accessories like a pop-up enclosure or a rotary kit for curved surface engraving. This will allow you to engrave things like mugs or tumblers. More advanced rotary kits have a check system that will also allow you to engrave oddly shaped items like rings and baseballs. When considering adding a laser cutter to your arsenal, it's important to consider the requirements for the operating environment. Unlike a 3D printer that can be used in your basement or bedroom, a laser cutter is best used in the garage. You'll need good ventilation to prevent the accumulation of fumes and eye protection to shield against laser radiation. 
These safety glasses are standard equipment with the Falcon 2. When used in combination with 3D printing, a laser cutter can open up a whole new avenue of potential projects. It's the perfect tool to have on hand for when you need a last minute gift. With it, you can turn an ordinary object into a personalized keepsake. If you're a business savvy individual, there's also a big market for laser engraved products. Whatever your application, laser engravers are a great addition to any makerspace. I hope you learned something here today. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing and laser cutting.